Hi, in this podcast, we're going to talk about two fundamental chemical laws, the law of definite proportions and the law of multiple proportions. All right, first, let's talk about the law of definite proportions. Uh, it says that com compounds have a constant composition by mass and that they react in specific ratios by mass. So, make sure I'm all set up here. All right, so uh, let's say we were talking about the compound... H2O, okay, water. All right, we know that water has two hydrogen atoms. And we also know that it has one oxygen atom. Okay, we know that hydrogen is 1.0079 grams, which is about one gram if we round it. Um, and then we know that oxygen is 16 grams. Okay, and these numbers come from the periodic table. So we know that the total hydrogens are 2 grams, and the total oxygen is 16 grams, which means that no matter what, one mole of water will always weigh 18 grams. Okay? So, H2O, it'll always be that. All right, there's another example. That one's nitrogen. Uh, you see the nitrogens can combine in different uh, configurations uh, with oxygen. And then it shows you the masses down here. Uh, remember that nitrogen's 14 and 16 is oxygen. And then when you figure out the ratios of them all, you see that the ratios are always whole numbers. And that's what those compounds will always get. Okay, and they always have a specific ratio by mass. All right, let's move on to the next law. Uh, the next law is the law of multiple proportions. It states that when two elements, A and B, form two different compounds, the masses of element B that combine with a fixed mass of element A can be expressed as a ratio of whole numbers. All right, so what we're talking about here is let's say we have compound a, B, compound A, B, 2, and compound A, B, 3. All right, and you could keep continuing this pattern, you know, on and on and on. So if we just have one gram of all of compound A, okay, so each compound only has one gram of A, then the amount of B that we have in each of these compounds, they're all going to equivalent up to some sort of ratio, okay, between one another. So we'll call them X, Y, and Z. Okay, so the ratio could be 1 to 2 to 3, or the ratio could be some other uh, variable of that. All right, so you're probably going, what does all that mean? All right, so let's say we had um, we have uh, carbon and oxygen. Carbon and oxygen can form two different compounds. Okay, one of them, CO, the other one, CO2. Okay, so CO in this example is kind of like our AB, and CO2 is kind of like our AB2 from the previous example. All right, so if we were going to just talk about the ratio of, now remember the law states the ratio of the second element to one gram of the first. Okay, so that means we have to kind of switch them. So oxygen will go first. All right, so let's talk about the ratio of uh, oxygen to carbon in each of these. All right, well this one we only have one oxygen molecule to every one carbon molecule. Okay, and over here we have two oxygen molecules to every one carbon molecule. All right, now if we just wrote their formula masses down here, we'd have 16 grams to 12 grams and 32 grams to 12 grams. Okay, now the second element is what makes the ratio here. So you see the ratio would be 16 to 32 and that would be 
a 1 to 2 ratio. Okay, now here's how you want to approach proving the law of multiple proportions um, step by step. If you're given a percentage, you want to assume that it's a 100 gram sample, and so you'll change your percent signs to grams. Um, and then if you have to subtract to obtain the other portion of the sample, you will. And then secondly, you're going to divide the mass of the second element by the mass of the first element. After you get those answers, you divide uh, the smallest of those answers by, uh, both of them get divided by that smallest number, and then you obtain whole number ratios. So you see at the end, it gets to be very similar to empirical and molecular formula. All right, so here's an example. So you have mercury, and it has two oxides. Uh, one of them has 96.2% mercury by mass. The other has 92.6% mercury by mass. Uh, prove that these follow the law of multiple proportions. Okay, so uh, we have two different mercury oxides. Okay, we've got, so we've got two different ones. So I'm just going to label them one and two for right now. All right, and we know that this one, the first one, is 92.6, I mean 96.2, sorry, dyslexia. Um, and I told the first step, remember, was change the percentage to grams. So that's how many grams of mercury we have. All right, and then to find the other percentage that's just oxygen, we got to subtract from 100. Okay, so we get uh, 3.8 grams of oxygen. Okay, now over here, the second one, uh, this one had 92.6 grams of HD. Okay, and again, to find the percentage that was just oxygen or the portion that was just oxygen, I want to subtract from 100. Okay, so you get 7.4 grams of oxygen, 3.84 grams of oxygen. All right, now the second step was divide the second mass, so oxygen is our second mass, by our first mass. So we're going to divide both of our oxygen values by our mercury values. Okay, this one I got 0 0.0395. Okay, and this one over here, we're going to do the same thing. Divide by the mercury, and I got 0 0.0799. Okay, now look at these two numbers, which is smaller. The 0 0.0395 is smaller, so both of those get divided by 0 0.0395. Okay, and we obtain our ratios. So this one equals 2, that one equals 1. So they prove the law of multiple proportions because we got ratio of 1 to 2. Okay, here's a, another example. Uh, this one says nitrogen and oxygen form two different compounds. Uh, show that they follow the law of multiple proportions. Okay, this time we're not given percentage, we're just given grams. So we're going to just simply take our second mass right here, the oxygen, gets divided by the first mass, which is the nitrogen. Okay, so this one we get 2.284. All right, and then this oxygen gets divided by the nitrogen for that compound. Okay, and this is a uh, 2.855. Now we look at these numbers, which is smaller, 2.284. So both of them get divided by 2.284. All right, so the first one up here, I'm going to kind of write it over here to the side since I sort of ran out of room. So that one equals 1, and this one equals 1.25. Now we have an issue, we don't have whole numbers. But is there some multiple that you could multiply both these numbers by to get whole numbers? Well, 0.25, you could multiply everybody by 4, and that would get you rid of that. So if you did 4 times 1, that'd be 4, and then 4 times 1.25 is 5. So your ratio would be 4 to 5. So yes, they follow the law of multiple proportions.